back. I hope you're doing well. I'm also really doing fine and I thank God. Today is a rather amazing day and we are doing something that has not been done in this channel before. I have with me my classmates and you guys are going to hear a lot from them being in med school, what their experiences have been like, the challenges they have had to go through, the high moments, the low moments, the low moments, sorry, the awkward moments and I hope you're going to enjoy this. So I just want each of them to introduce themselves and tell us something about themselves. My name is Kiai Oliver. I'm, uh, I'm Dr. Nerima's classmate. It is, it is a privilege to be in Dr. Vicky's show and uh, we hope it's going to be amazing for this uh, edition. And uh, about me, you know, it's really hard to say about yourself, but I just think I'm a gentleman in <laughs> who has refused to finish school <laughs> because of uh, various moments. I love writing, I love outdoor activities, and uh, I hope one day I become a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Oliver. <laughs> yes? Uh, hi, my name is Brenda. I drunk, I drunk, like Meguna Meguna. I'm my name is classmate, and uh, I just like being me. That's all. <laughs> oh, she just likes being her. <laughs> so you have a gentleman and you have someone who likes being her. That's amazing. So we got to my my right side. So start with you. Okay. So hi everyone. Uh, my name is Beth Chill Oteril. I'm very bubbly and such an extrovert. I love socializing, and I'm happy to be here today. Yeah. Thank you, Beth Trill. Then our final one. Hi, guys. Hi. My name is Esther Mombi. I'm also Dr. Nalima's classmate. Uh, I love reading and I love writing. Yes, and I'm glad to be here. Wow. So, guys, you've heard it from them and we go directly to what we're going to do. So, we start with Oliver. <laughs> you say that you're a gentleman. Yeah. And uh, if I remember right, when we were in second year, there are times when we had to use the school bus from here to Chiromo. I just want to know if, if there's any moment in time when you are a gentleman and you actually stood for a lady to sit in the bus. Okay, you know, I, I, I began second year with, uh, with a fracture. I had a fractured forearm, both the, wrist, both the radius and the ulna. Bones. So when you talk about radius and ulna, what is this? The, the bones of the forearm. You see, I have a scar here oh, sorry. and a scar here. So you know, I had a really hard time finding a, a seat in the bus. So most of the time I, I stood in the bus and if I was lucky, I used the driver's door as the entry point. It was quite chaotic and when I recovered, I realized that uh, the gentleman's thing is uh, you only wear the cap when it is convenient. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so, so you only wear the cap when, when it's convenient. convenient. Yeah, so, you know, when there's this nice lady, you just don't want to, how can a nice, beautiful lady stand? And you give them a seat, but you know, the normal ones, you know, how to, they endure. Okay, so you're you being a gentleman depends on whether someone is normal or nice. No, it de actually it, de it depends. It depends. <coughs> it depends on uh, a lot of things. Uh. Am I tired on that day? <laughs> Most of the days I'm tired, and I'm, I'm not going to give up my seat. And the ladies will just have to bear with me. <laughs> yeah, and if you are a beautiful lady, of course we can consider giving you a seat after after deliberating. <laughs> but just guys remember that beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Yes. So <laughs> let not let that not discourage you. And so we move on to Brenda. Brenda introduced herself and she said that she just likes being her. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you a question, Brenda. You like being you. Imagine you are in an environment. They say when you go to Rome, do what they are doing. I don't know if you're in an environment where people are striking. University students are striking because they want a certain thing to be done. But you're not used to striking. And whatever they're striking for will help you. In that situation, will you just be you or will you join them? Well, when I'm, uh, I say that I like being me, yes. in a normal uh, circumstance, I, it's not like I don't like striking. 
I like <laughs> getting what I want uh -huh. to be done. Mm -hmm. So if that is something that is going to help me, then I'll join the group. The only thing that I won't be able to do, of course, is shouting because now uh, that's going to be. But when it comes to like working with the other guys, mm -hmm. I'll do it. Wow, so you being you does not prevent you from standing with other people. Yes. Okay. But now, if uh, it's something that I don't believe, like, doesn't go with my core beliefs, mm -hmm. then uh, I'll try to explain to the others why I don't think I'll do it. Mm -hmm. yes. And Brenda, throughout your time in med school, is there a time where people did not understand who you are and that gave you a really hard time interacting with them? <laughs> Oh, that's true. Because uh, people used to think like um, this uh, serious person uh, is not fighting with others. I think you're serious. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Brenda is like the most serious lady in my class. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're the most serious. She's, yeah, you're the most serious. <laughs> she studies she's as if she's doing a PhD. Yet, you know? <laughs> not that serious. She's not that serious. <laughs> she studies as if she wants to do a PhD. No. <laughs> yeah, we all I'm look you want to be like this. Of course, yeah. PhD will get that vaccine, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so Brenda, I just uh -huh. believe like... So what happened at that time when pe people think you're serious? Mm -hmm. So tell us that time when people misunderstood you and how did you deal with that? Okay, when I joined school, I was like... Uh, I was uh, a bit quiet, mm -hmm. a very quiet person because I didn't know most people. And uh, so I found solace in my books. Oh, but then with time, I realized that naturally I'm not a quiet person. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I started talking with people, I created friends, and uh, it helped to break the barrier. Mm -hmm. But there are some circumstances where I've found even my friends <laughs> <laughs> having left me out in some uh, activities, thinking, just assuming that I would join them because uh, it's not. <laughs> but it's fine, I Sorry. understand. <laughs> uh. Yeah, but. Um, <coughs> If you were to meet someone who knew me in high school mm. and someone who knows me now, they'll describe me as two different people. Two different people. So, people ask, uh, some of us think you're serious, but in high school you are not that serious. In high school I was pretty serious. Oh, so right now you're really <laughs> happy. <laughs> okay. Wow. So thanks, Brenda. So guys, we are moving on to another stage and we just want a, a few of us to share with us um, there are awkward moments in first year, you know, like for instance, I remember uh, we were with my friends and it was my first time actually stepping in Nairobi. I'm told that I was in Nairobi when I was about four or five months old, <laughs> but now as I grew up, it was my first time. And this day we got lost in town. We found ourselves in State House Girls High School. So we had, we told the get man, anyway, Sissy, we are just first years, we have reported today and we got lost, we need help. So the get man had to call. <laughs> had to call a teacher from that school who came and brought us back to university. <laughs> so, so I just want to go to bed, to bed chill and movie. <laughs> and I think I'll start with movie. Uh, what was that awkward moment, your first time mm -hmm. in University of Nairobi as a first year medical student? Um, okay, the one that stands out the most to me uh -huh. is uh, just immediately after we had joined first year, uh, there were some elections that were going on in school. Mm -hmm. So, as you will come to university, you will notice that people have the habit of sticking posters everywhere. Yeah. So we happened to be sitting on a bench outside with two friends of mine, and I happened to be picking on one of the posters. Mm -hmm. So, um, there were some guys around there who started now, who came and they are like, why are you picking posters? Three, what, 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 what? They were very rowdy, but you didn't know the reason they were doing that. Kumbe, they wanted to steal from one of us. Mm -hmm. So they caused a commotion, caused a commotion, then one of us was a guy, so they started tugging at him and pulling him, and then the other two of us who were girls, it was actually like a tug of war. We are pulling him and they are pulling him, because <laughs> so he was trying to defend us, mm -hmm. and uh, in that whole commotion, uh, they took his phone. And then all of a sudden, it was come, we are like, we are going to Chokota and then it's just come. So after a while when we were walking back to, when we were, when we were or taking our friend back to his place, mm -hmm. we noticed he doesn't have his phone. 
So when we went back to the benches, there was apparently a group of goons that was there and saw what was happening. So they came and asked us, are you guys okay? And then one of them offered, was like, we know who stole your phone. Mm -hmm. We will help you. So since I was the one living in that hostel, uh, they got my contacts and told me that the next day they would help us. So the next day, this one of them, we did, by then we didn't know they were goons. Mm -hmm. One of them came and told me, we know the name of the person who stole your phone. Go to this security office and say that such and such a person stole your phone. Mm -hmm. So in the course of the day, I didn't get time to do that, so I planned to do it in the evening. Then as I was walking to class that day, I actually saw the name of the person they wanted me to say at the security office mm -hmm. in one of the politicians' posters. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there we realized, wow, they actually wanted us to report, report a contestant, uh, to report a contestant as a thief. Yeah, as a thief. So I think that was the, like, the biggest time for me. And through the whole experience, actually, with, okay, I didn't know who goons were <laughs> until way later is when I understood who these people actually were. Yeah. And uh, it was just a big experience, and I, I'm grateful that at least we didn't uh, get to that state of reporting. Yeah, because guys, I'm imagining you have been tricked by someone to report someone who is contesting for a seat as a thief and you're a first year. Definitely people will believe that as a first year you're saying the truth. That would have been catastrophic. But at least Mumbi, God got you. <laughs> so if you're coming to first year and joining any university, just don't listen to everyone. Now, we go to you, Beth Trill. <laughs> So naturally, you're a bubbly person, as yes. you told us, yeah. and I know you love traveling. Oh yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as a first year, <laughs> how did you manage to balance between traveling and attending classes? <laughs> and how do you manage up to now? <laughs> okay, um, for me, med school has really not been what people expect it to be. It has just been normal. Nothing in my life has changed. I've been traveling almost every weekend the way I've been doing in the past. I have been going for social events, you know, attending parties and going for mentorship and a lot of stuff. So in first year, I remember almost every weekend I used to travel and actually it uh, affected my studies uh, a little bit because now it was my first time in med school. I didn't know that we really needed to study more than <laughs> usual. <laughs> So sometimes I used to miss a section sessions on Mondays, and then uh, with the time I realized that probably I just needed to read more, but not stop my social life. So med school for me has been awesome. Even now I'm in sixty, I still travel. Yes. This weekend I will not have school. Even <laughs> next weekend I won't be around still. So. <laughs> And I'm managing. I believe for me. Because of the corona. <laughs> no, even without the corona, I had plans to travel. So, my opinion is that you can always create time for whatever thing you want despite being in medical school. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but the fact that you say you travel a lot and you seem to have tried to balance your social circle despite being in med school, mm -hmm. is there a time when you've had to battle depression? Because you appear like you really have ways to let things out. <laughs> so is there a time when this didn't work for you and med school took a toll on you? Well, um, so naturally I'm a person who, even when I'm under so much pressure, I don't seem to to yield to pressure or you know start feeling depressed. I'm never stressed even during exams. Ish. Yes. <laughs> I, I think when I when I get like too stressed, what I do is I pray. Wow. Yeah, I'm a very prayerful person. I just pray. That's all I do if I'm wow. in trouble. But going into depression, well, I don't remember because I have so many friends and they are very supportive. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Beth Trill. We'll be coming back to you shortly. Now back to you, Oliver. Yes, yes. Uh, out there, people say medical school is tough. Medical school is a no-go zone. Do you agree with them? Well, uh, I will partly agree and partly not agree. Okay. Every, I believe every place, every person you take has its own challenges. Mm -hmm. And you have to be prepared for it. 
no one is going to give you something on a silver plate. Mm -hmm. Like uh, you won't just come from nowhere and then six years later you are handed over a medical degree. <laughs> yeah, you must pay the price. Yeah. And uh, the price involves doing what you are supposed to do. Like you see, for example, for me, I had a very hard time in first year. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my junior years, let me say first year mostly, because you know I had just come from home. I was uh, the student who was always performing well, and then when I got into medical school, things were different. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had to adjust. Like you know, uh, like let's say with KCC, I was I was the best in my class because the very best student had gone to Yale. You're number two. Yes, and then you know, anatomy, the first cut, they decided to rank people. <laughs> You know what? I don't know what soul uh, saw that uh, when his name was converted to Paul. I think I saw that kind of a light. Yes. And then, uh, things just clicked into place. Uh -huh. I didn't struggle much. I put in my best foot forward and uh, it really paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so really, medical school is uh, how you culture yourself and uh, what the work you have to put in the work. Mm -hmm. You have to see patients, you have to look at books. You have to, but it doesn't mean that you don't engage in other things mm. that life has to offer. Mm. You eat better to adventure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, Ukiona via Ilea, Jua Vime. Vime That's my take. Wow, thank you. That's a nice one, Bana. Number two to number 235. <laughs> yeah, uh, assault in Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. Assault to Paul conversion <laughs> has to take place. And right now, guys, the way he is among some of our best students in class. Yeah. So you see, everyone has a story at the end of it. It was, it was, it was stressful. Yeah. Just, you know, sometimes you go to that list, mm. and you know someone is just happy, not because that they have performed well, <laughs> but because they have beaten you. Any example that you ever felt? You felt that way. You share your experience. So, Brenda, tell us the experience. Mm -hmm. So, there's a time when you felt people were going to the notice boards to simply rejoice because they have beaten someone who's their competitor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I thought, guys. Now, Brenda, I just want to throw this question at you. Um, when we were coming, the advice out there was by our seniors at that time was. Med school is tough. Just make sure you get a 50 mm -hmm. plus one. Mm -hmm. And did that advice derail you in terms of how how hard working you are? Because you see, once someone tells you all you need is a 50 plus one, there's a way in which, as a person, you just stop working that much hard because you're aiming for a 50 plus one. Did that affect you and did that make you aim lower than you should be doing as a student? Okay, when you're told that the first mark is uh, 50 plus 1, I was like, ah, sure, we've been getting 90s in high school. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, it's okay, we, people can get 50s, but me, I'm going to aim 90. Oh, so, but when we got our first part, yes, I was shocked. I was like, no, this is not me. Uh -huh. This is not <laughs> that 90 that we used to get in high school. So that's. Okay, at that point I realized maybe this getting this shift is not something very easy. Mm -hmm. So I had to work hard, but I was not aiming at fifty. I was mm -hmm. always aiming at above seventy there. Uh -huh. But if it's too hard, okay, there, there are times when I would even say the prayer <laughs> when the paper was too hard on me. Please just help me get a fifty. <laughs> yes. But when you are reading, you, you you don't aim at fifty because 